Okay. Today we're going to be replacing the wire on the Estate Swing ES1000D. What sometimes can happen is this wire can get damaged right here on the back here, and sometimes the limit switches uh, can not work because of it. So today we're going to be replacing this wire to make sure the limit switches are working correctly. The first thing you're going to do is to remove the wire restrain from the back of the arm. This comes off, and then the only tricky part to this is inside there's a little rubber grommet, and that's going to be stuck kind of inside there, and you can try to get it out by pushing the wire in, and then pulling the wire out a couple times. Um, it's not critical you get that out right away, it's just a matter of remembering it's in there, because when you take these four screws off, if you can't move the piece off, that's probably because the rubber grommet is holding in place. So next thing we're going to do is just remove the four screws. Okay. Once we get the last screw out, you'll see that the back housing here should just pop right off. Uh, you might need to use a screwdriver to pop the end off. Sometimes it gets a little, a little stuck. And you see actually this part came off before that part, so you put a little muscle into it. That comes out. And remember the rubber grommet I had talked about earlier. Now you're going to want to work its way out of there just by moving the wire as best you can. Uh, you might want to try... This one's exceptionally stuck in there. Let me try to move this. Okay, see I could... I moved it without taking the grommet out, but... Yeah, so The grommet's still in there. I'm just going to move this back because it doesn't. it's not really critical at this minute that I get it off. As you see, once I get this off, it exposes this orange strip with, with all these wires go. And all you got to do is take a small screwdriver, undo all these wires. What I would do is maybe take a picture of this setup because the wires on the over here are black, all black, and so you got to remember that they go back in the right order. So yellow, red, and black is an important thing to remember when you put these back on. Uh, the red and black ones are color-coded already, but these small wires aren't on this side. So take a picture, write it down, remember that the black, red, and yellow have to go in the same order. Okay, once you have those out, you're going to have to feed wire through. Pull it through there, and now this is where the rubber grommet, there, see it popped out? That's going to make it easier to pull out now, because that rubber grommet came, came loose. Usually it's not that stuck in there, but looks like there was an extra piece of rubber in there. If the new wire isn't already stripped back, the tip I would say is once you get this sliced up and make sure all five wires are not uh, in the jacket when you cut it, because I've done that before where you leave the, especially the little black one, can hide in there and then you cut the wire and you have to do it all over again. So make sure you count all five wires, cut this back. Is going first. And the rubber grommet goes this way. If you have some lubrication, it might be easier once you get it on there to slide it back, but in this case it's not that hard, so I'll just slide this back to get it out of the way for now. And we're going to run it back through this. Run it back through this. And then we're simply going to put the wires back into where they were. As I said before, the larger wires are color-coded, so you see red, then black. One thing you want to avoid here is that the you don't want the bare wire touching this housing, so 
so you want to make sure you cut this wire short enough so it can go all the way in there you see now there's not really any exposed wire there to touch anything tighten this down as best you can and then give give a little tug on the wire to make sure it's in there correctly seated in there correctly make sure you have a metal to metal connection it's real easy to tighten it down and if it's not making a metal metal con connection it's not going to obviously work okay. alright remember that they have to go in a specific order so it has to go black red and then yellow red is your common black is the extended limit in most cases that's the closed limit because the arm is extended while it's closed We'll put these wires in, and then we'll do a little check to make sure we did everything correct, correctly, I should say. Remember to give a little tug on the wire, make sure you got a good connection, make sure it's making a metal to metal connection. And once we get these in here, we'll, we can check that using a, a multimeter to make sure it's working. So we have all those in there. What we're going to do with a multimeter, your multimeter should have a setting to where if you touch the two leads together, it's going to make a noise. What, mean, what that means is that there's continuity through the circuit. So. You know, a simple test would be, so the yellow to yellow, that means there's a good connection all the way through the wire. Red to red, that one's making a good connection. Black and black, you hear that's making a good connection. So we know we got a good uh, connection there. And then the next thing we can try, just to make sure while we're here, while we have this open, we can test the limit switches just to make sure that if you're replacing the wire because you think one of the wires is the problem, we still want to make sure that the limit switches aren't the problem and that's really easy to check. So for instance, this is the retracted limit which goes to the yellow wire. If you put your voltmeter on these two wires, the red and the yellow, and you just take a a normal magnet, you know, this is kind of a broken magnet off of a, a motor, but you can get a magnet off your fridge or whatever magnet and put it as close to the limit switch as possible. You'll see it breaks the connection and it loses continuity. So we know that limit switch is working. And the reason why that this magnet works is because there's a magnet inside this that travels down the length of the arm as the arm extends out. So we know this is working because I'm using a magnet to trip it like that. So get it as close as possible, you'll see it'll break the connection. Now we're going to move on to the black wire. So between black and red is for your extended limit. We'll go ahead and put the magnet on that as well. And you'll see that it loses continuity, breaks the signal, and that's why the gate opener stops is because the magnet trips the limit switch. So we know the limit switches are working. Another thing you can uh, do, another trick to testing the limit switches, if you don't have this assembly open, to where you can check the wiring and you're just trying to check to see if it's the limit switch itself or the wire. You can do a trick where you can put the limit uh, magnet close to the limit switch and it's going to make a very faint click. I don't know if the microphone is going to pick up on it. But it's very, very faint, but it is there and you can check to see if it's making that clicking sound. So if it's making that clicking sound, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that the limit switch is working. I've very rarely seen that the limit switch clicks and doesn't work. Actually, I've never seen it, so pretty confident that if it does make that faint, very faint clicking sound that the limit switch is working. So we're going to assume everything's fixed because we got continuity. We checked it on this end of the wire, so we know the wire is good. We know the limit switch is good, so now we can put it back together. Uh, confident that we have everything connected properly. So when we're putting it back together, the more, the more narrow side goes on the bottom. Just put that back over. If 
press that in. Not really critical to press it in right now, but put this back with this on the bottom. Right now the unit you know, is upside down. Okay. And then we'll simply put these long screws back in. And this is the trickiest part of this uh, repair. These long screws, there's, no, there's not a channel that these go down, so they can go wherever you put them. And the trick is, is finding the hole at the bottom here to put the screw back into. And what can happen is if it goes past, it's really tricky to get back out. So what I would do is try to be as careful as possible. See, I just did it there. It went too far. I know I need to pull this back out. So this is going to take some trial and error to get these uh, screws back in. The easiest way to do it that I've found is to stand it on its end. And then you can find the sweet spot and you'll see, oop, see that one went too far. Another thing I would recommend is not tighten, tightening them down until you get all of them seated properly before you start tightening them down because once you have them tightened down, it's hard to get the other screws, the screws back out if they're not lined up. So this can be kind of tricky to get these back in seated correctly. Like I said, this is the trickiest part for sure. Once we get all four of these screws tight, where you just need to put this grommet back in and like I said if you have some lubrication it's a lot easier but this one is pretty pretty good so it's I don't have any lubrication to use but don't really need it in this case and what I've found this is another trick is you're gonna have to stick this grommet as far back as you can so you can get the other piece to wire strain properly seated to screw in so you want to take your small screwdriver and push it back as far as you can you know being careful not to damage the the threads but pushing that back it's going to make this a whole lot easier to screw back in because this can be yeah see it makes it a whole lot easier to screw that back in it'll go the majority of the way with your hand and then you can use the and you can use the pliers to get all the way tightened down. Okay, that's nice and tight. Then one more test to make sure nothing fell off while we're putting that back together. We'll check the continuity one more time and test the limit switches one more time. Make sure that we're good to go. So can set the multimeter to continuity. And the retracted limit is between red and yellow. You get that beeping noise, take your magnet, put that over the magnet, and you'll see that it breaks the continuity, breaks the circuit. So that one's still good. We're doing this to make sure none of the wires fell off in the process, and looks like we're good. Both the limit switches are still working. So this one's good to go.